a vaccine, a vaccine effectiveness show that for the immunocompetent people, a single booster shot continues to provide high levels of protection against severe disease caused by Omicron. This should not be confused with the fact that for many immunocompromised people already, a second booster shot, namely a fourth dose of an mRNA, is recommended because of what we know about their poor response to the initial regimen. And again, as I'll show you, new CDC data indicate that booster shots are safe and well tolerated. So let's get to some of the representative data. Next slide. This is a slide from the UK looking at vaccine effectiveness against hospitalization with Omicron. And you're looking at the diminution of efficacy or effectiveness after dose two, and the time on the bottom is weeks. And you're looking at two separate vaccines, the Pfizer-BioNTech and the Moderna. And as you can see with hospitalizations, although it goes down from the initial very high 90 plus percent, goes down to around 78 or 80 percent, nonetheless, it's still at a high level, relatively speaking. Next slide. This is an even larger study, a large cohort study from the CDC recently put out in the MMWR, their vision network. I want you to concentrate at the two dose vaccine efficacy at four to five months against Omicron. And again, it goes down to 58%. However, at four to five months, even though it has come down over a period of time, you could see it go from 91 to 88 to 78. Nonetheless, the level of 78 is still a good protective area. As I'll get to soon, I'll show you what that means looking forward. But I do want to mention on the next slide the safety of this, because we often get asked that. If you look at the CDC from February 11th and look at their monitoring systems, the VSAFE and the VAERS, it's very clear that for people 18 years of age or older who've seen the same mRNA vaccine brand for all of their vaccinations, they actually experience fewer adverse reactions following the booster dose than they did after the second dose. And in fact, 92% of reports to VAERS, which is all adverse events related or not, are not considered serious. And headache, fever, and muscle pain were the most frequently reported reactions. And the VSAFE data found medical care was rarely received after a booster dose. So let's go to the last summary slide. Next slide. The dynamics of COVID-19 outbreak as Dr. Walensky just showed you a moment ago, continue to point in a sharp downward direction. Vaccination and boosting will be critical in maintaining that downward trajectory, particularly when you're talking about the red curve of severe disease leading to hospitalization. And getting back to the first question that I posed in my first slide, the potential future requirement for an additional boost or a fourth shot for mRNA or a third shot for J&J &J is being very carefully monitored in real time. And recommendations, if needed, will be updated according to the data as it evolves. I'll stop there and back to you, Jeff.